In most cases, symptoms indicate a probable etiology. But in peripheral neuropathies, etiology is not always obvious. In front of mild or transient symptoms, one can wonder if the symptoms are even real. It is tempting to mistake them for psychosomatic problems and waste precious time in the diagnosis. People uh, have the symptoms and sometimes they don't know. Um, they are told that uh, those symptoms are not real, are uh, in their head. In their heads. They didn't really listen to me, and I even didn't believe in myself because when a professional tells you that you're distracted or that there's nothing wrong with you, that you are fine and that the problem is yours, that it is in your head, you think, maybe he's right. Then it is critical to listen to the patient and ask the right questions. The difficult thing for doctors is to listen to their patient who talks about their life, try to piece together the elements and at the same time stay focused on any signs suggestive of a neurological disease to be investigated. Sometimes this involves signs of depression. The difficulty lies in not immediately thinking it is a trivial disease. Forgive me, such as depressive syndrome in a person who works a great deal and is normally tired and so on. No, it could be something else. The key to an early diagnosis is also in a well-conducted clinical examination. The basics of neurological examinations are crucial. Watch how the patient walks, watch their feet, quickly look at their motor skills and sensitivity, then check their reflexes. That is the least that can be done. The world of neuropathies is quite complex. There are multiple etiologies and ports of entry. Of course, in cities, you'll see what is toxic, what is diabetic and so on. However, as soon as something is atypical, I actually ask the doctor the minute they see something out of the ordinary, whether it is pest covers, focal amyotrophy, amyotrophy of the quadriceps, for example, this is absolutely not typical and merits a neurology consultation. This is not something you usually see in diabetes. Anything out of the ordinary, like someone young, a young patient with a neuropathic disease is uncommon. A young 15-year-old patient who is not diabetic, who does not drink alcohol, etc., who is seen in a consultation by a doctor who detects a neuropathy should be referred to a neurologist. It can be an acquired neuropathy or CIDP that appears. You can clearly see that in young people. It can be a genetic neuropathy. You don't know, but they must be referred. I think that you should still easily refer them to a neurologist. <laughs>